You want some? Oh, hello. I'll be with you in about half an hour. Out there today for the first time, I was really afraid. Not just scared, I mean really afraid. I'm not surprised. You okay now? I'll go over and take a look. It was just the initial shock. I'm over that now. Apparently the artist likes an audience. That's weird enough on its own. Paint's not fully dry yet. Recognize the star. Come on. It's unmistakable. The technique, the brushwork, they're exactly the same as in those paintings of Freya's I found. This one's just as mad. Freya Jordal is dead. Is she? We've been over that ground, haven't we? She took an overdose of sleeping tablets 14 years ago. If we believe Dr. Albrickson. Who painted this? And why? Why? But as to who? Well, we know one person who painted a style very much like Freya did. Someone who inherited it from her. Ingrid. Have you been over this place thoroughly? No. Well, then let's do that. Now. What's the point? Look, someone's been coming here, often perhaps. Remember what Mrs. Toven said about finding that things have been moved since her last visit? Well, there's a good chance that whoever it was left something behind. Something that might identify them. Okay. So what are we looking for? Anything that doesn't fit in this museum. I don't know, a book or a magazine published after January 1970. Anything that's even slightly out of key. I'd know what's significant if I saw it. I thought you hadn't got a key for this door. I didn't have, but I found this in your doll's desk. There's nothing in here, though. Albrigson told me that this is where Freya was kept when she became violent. Like in there. What's that? It looks like a diary, but it's locked. There doesn't seem to be a key for it here. Yes, you're right. It's Freya's diary. She didn't keep it up regularly, it would seem. Just odd days. 
Thursday, 17th of February. Now there are no more shadows. It is wonderful to be alive. I have lost much, but I still have so many blessings. My dearest Anna Marie and Ingrid, the greatest of them. We are so happy, the three of us, when we are together here on my island. Thursday, 19th of April. Spring is on its way, and soon the island will be looking really beautiful again. Already the early flowers are beginning to show. But just the same, I am impatient for the summer to arrive, and so are the children. Because it is then that we have such fun together when we're here on our own. They're all pretty much like that as far as I can see. Just everyday happenings and random thoughts. Nothing very interesting or revealing, I'm afraid. But for someone who is supposed to be mentally unbalanced, very lucid, wouldn't you say? Oh, I understand at times she's perfectly lucid. In the early days of her illness, anyway. I'll give this to Anna Marie next time I see her. I'm sure she'd like to have it. And I'll apologise for the lock being broken. painting. We'll put it on the bonfire on Midsummer's Eve. That was a waste of time. It's worth doing. No one's left any kind of mark on that house. Only Freya. Okay, maybe she's dead. But she still lives there, doesn't she? We know someone's trying to frighten you away. And do you think it's Ingrid? Well, she's the one who's so desperate to buy this place from you. And I promised her that if I sell it, it'll be to her. When will that be, then? Maybe she's not willing to wait. And besides, getting hold of your dad's home might not be her any reason. Perhaps she resents you being here. Why? Jealousy? A suspicion of some kind? As to the reason I was mentioned in her father's will? Right. But to go to such lengths... What is it? I don't know. Something's nagging me. It's there at the back of my mind, and I've got a feeling it's important, but I just can't pin it down. Thank you for coming. You knew I would, I hope. Just the same. Shall I stay tonight? Yes. And not because I'm afraid. quiet. So it would seem. It's a great place for children, you know. A world of their own. Children? Of course. That's what's been bothering me. In her diary, Freya writes about her children. About Anna Marie and Ingrid. Well? Dr. Albrigson told me they were never on the island with her. They visited her occasionally here, but never on the island. Freya mentions being on her own with them over there. And anyhow, she was never there on her own. Astrid Lindemann was always around. There are dozens of references to Anna Marie and Ingrid. It can't be true. Not if what Albrecht has said is right. She imagined it. Monday, 15th of August. Anna Marie has decided that when she grows up, she's going to be a ballet dancer. And she tells me... Friday, 8th of June. Anna Marie and Ingrid had a party today and invited all their friends. I taught them a new song, and we had a very happy time. But then it was all spoiled when she came. Go on. But then it was all spoiled when she came. I hid from her, and the children and their friends said nothing to her, and she went away again. This can't go on. And afterwards I did my best, show her that she is not welcome. Friday the 8th of June. 
When did you go across to the island and discover all the dolls having a tea party? The weekend before last, on Friday night. That was the 8th of June. Sunday, 8th of January. Your doll is dead. I've told Ingrid what happened, and she understands. What? Friday, 13th of January. I learned today that your doll has left my island to a bastard of his. This is more than I can bear. He has done this as a final insult to me and to Anna Marie and to Ingrid. When did you arrive in Ellison? June the 5th. Wednesday, 6th of June. She is here. Here to claim what is not hers by any right. Here to shame and rob us all. I tried to stop her, but I was not successful. The fault and the insult are your dolls. But she is the one who must be punished for them. Who is he? A friend. Is he local? Yes. How long have you known him? Seems like a very long time. I see. But you didn't ask him in. No. I wanted to speak to you alone. More questions. Only one. Do you recognize this handwriting? Yes, of course. It's, it's Freya's. Where did you get this? Are you absolutely positive? My eyesight is as good as ever, thank God. I know this writing well. I've seen it often enough. Of course it's friends. But you didn't tell me. Where did you find this? In her bedroom. In the house on the island. Then you had the answer to your question already, didn't you? Only it's not possible. Because apart from anything else, there are references to me in it. As Yalmar Yordle's bastard. And that's not the only mention I get. So you see, Freya couldn't have written any of that. Not unless she didn't commit suicide in 1970. And that she is still alive. What are you saying? What are you saying? You positively identify that as your niece's handwriting. Well, if it is, what other explanation is there? Please help me. There has to be an answer and I must know what it is. Go and leave me alone. Get out of this house. I've nothing to say. Nothing. What you're suggesting. Go. go. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset please, you. Please, go away. Go away. What have you been saying to her? Why have you done this? You don't understand. Miss Lindemann has asked you to leave. Please do so. At once. Are you all right? Did you recognize the handwriting? There's no doubt it's phrase. Well, either she's lying. Why should she? Yeah. Why should she? The idea that Freya's still alive just isn't feasible. It has to be Ingrid. And she's doing all this to scare me away. I think she's tried to do more than just scare you. I didn't say anything before because, well, it could have just been a very odd coincidence. But I don't think it is, not now. What? I had a look at the Nielsen's motor cruiser last week. There were deep scratches all along the bow. It had obviously been in collision with another boat and fairly recently. It was Ingrid who ran me down. He was trying to kill me? Yes. 
because she thinks you're Yalma Yordal's illegitimate daughter. You're a living insult to her and to Freya when she takes on her persona. But what about the woman I saw on the coastal steamer and again on the island? Whatever you may think and however much you've tried to reason her away, I know what I saw and what I saw both times was Freya Yordal. Yes, and I'll go along with that now, only it wasn't Freya, it was Ingrid. Dressed up like her mother. Not like her, as her. Because there are times when she believes she is Freya Yordal. The diary's evidence of that. Yes, but it can't have been Ingrid I saw on the boat because she and last met me when I arrived. Had the boat sailed when you saw the woman? No. Then she could have slipped ashore and caught a plane back to Orlison. But why bother putting in an appearance on the boat at all? Yes, I agree. That doesn't make any sense. But we're not dealing with a rational mind. And if you're right, why did Astrid get so upset? Because she genuinely thinks it is Freya's handwriting and she knows she's dead. Either that, or she also suspects the truth. So what do we do? I don't want the police involved in all this. No, I agree. Not if it can be avoided. That wouldn't do anyone any good. Besides, we don't have any hard evidence, just suppositions. I might be able to pick up something more concrete if I read this carefully all the way through. Could I keep it for a while? I'd feel a lot happier if you did move back into town. There's no reason to. I mean, we're not sure, are we? Sure enough. All right, I'll be on my guard from now on. And on your own. Please. Look. No one is going to frighten me away from here. I wouldn't give them the satisfaction. That's just stubborn. That's me, stubborn. Okay. I've got to drive over to Mulder now to cover a political rally. I doubt if it'll be over much before midnight. I'll be all right, really, I will. If you don't mind me turning up in the early hours. It's a nice idea, but it's not necessary, honestly. And you've got work to do. Ring me in the morning. Why well, don't go doing anything foolish? Like what? Like going over to the island, for example? Well, Not for any reason. Not on your own. Promise? I love you. And I'm not going to take any unnecessary risks. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Probably. I'll ring you from Mulder. Okay. Don't worry if you can't. I'll speak to you tomorrow.
Ingrid? Hello, Catherine. I thought that was your car out there. How are you? Fine. And you? Oh, too busy. I'm becoming forgetful. I've got a meeting in an hour, left all the papers for it in the study last night. <laughs> Where's Ingrid? I don't know. I rang the bell. There was no answer, so I came round the back. Uh, she's probably visiting or gone into town. And I'm trespassing. <laughs> Nonsense. It's open house here, as far as you're concerned. You know that. So please, uh, wait if you want to. Make yourself comfortable. Well, I don't think I will. She might not be back for a while. Is there anything I can do? No, I just popped in for a chat. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, by the way, the... Uh, the contract for the sale of the factory will be ready for signature very soon. Oh, good. Thank you for all your help with that. Oh, it's nothing. I'm pleased to do it. And we'll be seeing you on Saturday, won't we? We are going to celebrate Midsummer Eve with us, I hope. We've got some friends coming here in their boats for a drink, and then we'll all go out on the fjord somewhere and have a picnic. You'll enjoy it. Well... Oh, no, no, no. You are going to join us, aren't you? We'd be very disappointed if you didn't. <sighs> May I bring someone? Of course, yes. Good idea. Thanks. Where's your boat now? Oh, Ingrid must have taken it. Uh, in which case, she's almost certainly in town. She swears she can get there quicker by boat than by car.
She has found a diary. It's in Freya's handwriting. Of that, I am certain. But some of the entries in it were made recently. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Bjornsson is not here. He has just gone out. Who? Oh. Will you leave a message for him? No, it's all right. Thank you. I'll call again. Goodbye. How can I help you? I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Follestadden, at such short notice. But I'm thinking of doing a piece on the effect this latest rise in the American interest rates could have on local businesses. to be rushing about like this, but I haven't got that long to catch the plate of Bergen. <laughs> the trade fair, I did tell you, didn't I? Oh, of course, I'd forgotten. How long will you be away? Mm, I'll be back around midday on Sunday, on the coastal steamer. But you'll still be sleeping off the midsummer revelries, then. What you wanted to see me about, is it important? Yes, very. Well, 
Listen, you drive me to the airport in your car and we'll talk on the way. Well, what is it? What's the problem? Ingrid. When I got out to the island, I found all the dolls set out around the sitting room having a tea party. And afterwards, when I came back, that's when the motor launch came from behind the island and rammed the dinghy. Why didn't you come and tell me all this, after you discovered the diary? I still wasn't sure then, so I thought before I did anything, I'd tackle Ingrid with it, face to face, and see what she said. And did you? No. She wasn't at home when I called yesterday, and the boat wasn't there either. I thought maybe she'd gone over to the island, and I was right, because when I got over there, I found that. And have you got the diary with you? No. Where is it? It's quite safe. You don't seem at all surprised by any of this. I'm deeply shocked and horrified. But no. The fact is, I've been worried about Ingrid for quite a while now. We all have. Oh, she's always been a nervous, withdrawn sort of person, even as a child. But then, when she suddenly gave up painting and burnt all her pictures, she became even more distant, very disturbed emotionally. But Lars must have noticed this. <gasps> He's extremely worried about her. But neither of you have done anything about it. What could we do? She's my sister and his wife, for God's sake. We just didn't want to believe that she was... <sighs> we both suggested it would be a good idea if she were to see Dr. Albrechtson. She wouldn't hear of it. She always insisted there was nothing wrong with her. We were imagining it all. She even accused us of, well, all sorts of things. These moods of hers never seemed to last very long. And when they passed, she seemed perfectly all right. But now, she's been getting steadily worse. Lars and I can't protect her any longer. Something's got to be done about it, for her own sake. I'll go away if you think it might help. I don't think it would. You can't give up your inheritance. And even if you could, why should you? Being kept away from our mother during her illness affected Ingrid very badly, you know. She never forgave Jordal for that. And then, when mother committed suicide, Ingrid blamed him for it. She's convinced he treated her cruelly and that he was being unfaithful to her. I've tried to reason with her, but she won't listen. Sometimes it frightened me the way she hated him so much. Dear Catherine, I'm so sorry about all this. I just feel so desperately for Ingrid. Well... Everyone will do their best to help, and who knows with the right treatment. But who translated the diary for you? Anders Bjornsson. The journalist, he knows about this. He was with me when I found the diary, and I had told him what had happened up till then. But he won't use any of it professionally. How can you be sure of that? Because he won't. He won't betray the confidence in any way. Oh, I see. Oh, I hope not. Because if this got out, it's not only Ingrid who'll be hurt. Oh, that's my flight, I'm afraid. So until I get back on Sunday, we talk some more and work out how to handle it for the best. Please don't say anything to anyone. Not even Lars or Albrechtson. Of course I won't. I didn't have to go to Bergen. But it's too late to drop out now. I'm expecting this by some very important customers of mine. There's no reason why you shouldn't go. I'll be fine. You should.
wasn't at home. But I'm seeing her tomorrow. I'll talk to her then. It's all over, Anne. It's all going to come out now. I feel it. I know it. It has to. Looking for a deliberately disguised handwriting? Uh, no, something more than that, I think, Professor Solberg. What I really want to know is whether that diary could have been written by anyone whose signature is on that page. On the face of it, that's unlikely. But possible. Yes. But if the signature is genuine and the diary is a forgery, it's extremely difficult to sustain. Almost impossible over this length of text person, I believe. I would prefer not to know that. Given choices, I dislike being prompted. Graphology is not an exact science, and it's not my field. Only an interest, and to my mind, a valuable adjunct to clinical psychology. Yes, I realize that. But you are an acknowledged expert on handwriting. The police would never have got a conviction in the Halvik case, for instance, without your evidence. It was Halvik's personality as an international swindler on such a grand scale that attracted me on that occasion. The opportunity to analyze the documents he'd forged provided me with a further insight into it. My role as prosecution witness was entirely secondary as far as I was concerned. And the documents on their own could never have convicted him. The infamous Dr. Crippin's signature indicated that he was an inhibited, shy man who bottled up his emotions, whilst at the same time being headstrong, extremely aggressive, and possessing an inclination to total moral detachment. It would not have proved he was a murderer. Merely that he might, perhaps, be more capable of it than others. So if you are looking for evidence as such... Oh, no, not evidence. Well, not in the legal sense, anyway. I just need to know what I suspect is true. Please, Professor, there is no one else in Norway who can help me. And how urgent is this analysis? Very, I'm afraid. Well, it's not the sort of thing that can be done in five minutes. I'll need photographic enlargements of all these specimens. Slides will have to be made. And only when that's done can I even begin to form any kind of opinion. And note that word carefully. Opinion, not judgment. Yes, I understand. Late in a Friday afternoon is hardly the most convenient time to launch even the preparatory work for comparative tests like these. I appreciate that. And if it weren't so desperately important, I wouldn't trouble and you. And if I didn't know and respect and believe in you, Bjornsson, I wouldn't consider it. Well, even allowing for my being able to persuade my technicians to stay on for a while and my foregoing part of my weekend, it will not be possible for me to give you an answer much before noon tomorrow. And that's only an estimate. It may take longer. If I could catch the 1650 flight back to Orlison tomorrow, that would be fine. And equally so, if I could be free to spend Midsummer's Eve with my family. Well, let's aspire to both those aims, shall we? But did you tell Anna Marie about the painting in the diary? Yes, I told her everything. Oh. She has to know sometime. And what was her reaction? She was stunned, desperately upset by it all. She said that she and Lars had been worried about Ingrid's emotional state for some time. And what she told me about her fits in exactly with your theory. What are you doing in Oslo? Hopefully proving my theory. You don't have to. Maybe it's already been proved. What? I'll tell you when I see you. You haven't been doing anything foolish, I hope. Of course not. And you're all right? Yes, I'm fine. I'm going to have an early night. Good idea. I'll be thinking of you there, all alone. Not tomorrow night, I hope. Oh, by the way, I've let us in for spending Midsummer's Eve with the Nilsons. Us? Yes. I couldn't think of how to get out of Lars's invitation, and I didn't want to go without you. But is that a good idea, the way things are? I promised Anne-Marie not to do anything until we've talked again. Besides, there'll be quite a crowd. We don't have to stay for long. Well, OK. When are we expected? Around seven. Right. Only my flight doesn't get in until after six. By the time I get across from the airport... I'll meet you there, shall I? Fine. Bye, my love. Take care.
And here. Bye. There's no point in hiding. I know you're here. I want to talk to you. 